Here in this converted apple warehouse in the Sonoma County hamlet of Grattan, you will find Adela Akers in her studio most every day, working at her loom. I really wanted to be an artist weaving, you know. I didn't want to just make functional weavings because I've never been uh, interested in that. I find that I love my work, so I, I don't mind it working all the time, but I feel that's how the work develops. If I don't work, nothing is going to happen. Adela has been a weaver for over 45 years. During much of that time, she taught at the Tyler School of Art at Temple University in Philadelphia. That was until 1995 when she retired from teaching and moved to Northern California with her husband. I had more time. I had all my time. I could indulge in just uh, experimenting more. I had always worked with very heavy materials, and this was the first time I was going to use something very light and very airy. And there were a lot of things that were inspiring me, but also mostly just having the time and a more quiet life. Adela began exploring a more delicate approach to weaving. This is horsehair she is working into a linen piece. Well. Horsehair has been used in textiles for many, many years. It used to be used for uh, upholstery material a long time ago. The horsehair I purchased from a company in uh, Pennsylvania that they import the horsehair from China. And basically, they're, they sell to uh, brush manufacturers. So not many artists are using horsehair. Okay, now I'm ready to paint another section. Adela will spend as long as three months to complete one piece. That's because her work relies on a combination of delicate techniques. Here she is using acrylic paint. It's sort of like a shortcut for a very old traditional Japanese technique. It's called ikat. So this is a way to speed up the process and not deal with tying and dyeing the yarn. See how I use my finger underneath? just to make sure that the paint is going around the thread, otherwise it only stays on top. We'll wait for it to dry. Painting on threads creates one sort of line, but she also adds lines to the woven strips as well. To do a, a piece, let's say four by four feet, it takes me two or three months. Now, unfortunately, it means I can't produce as much work as I would like to. The materials are so fine and their steps are more steps, you know, it's the weaving. I used to weave the piece once it came off the loom, it was finished. Adela also incorporates metal in her work. She uses the recycled metal caps from wine bottles, pounding them flat, sorting them by color, and then cutting them into small strips. All my friends collect them for me. My biggest supplier is his friends we have in Pacific Palisades who give big parties. Even if they have a bartender, he knows that he's supposed to save them. People like the idea that they're participating in what I make, you know. I started doing the stitching. The first pieces I did using the metal, they were about memorials. And so the stitching became like a, a name or a word. The first one was because a close friend had died of AIDS, and, um, and so I did this first piece in his honor. And um, it's in a San Francisco collection now, a private collector. Then I did a very large piece inspired by the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, D.C., and that had 2,500 of those little metal strips. Uh, the repetition gave me the feeling of um, what are we doing in this world. That metal adds another layer, another dimension to the work. Uh, the fact that I'm covering all with the hair, it becomes like a veil. So the shininess of the metal filters through. So it's, it's an element of surprise. This is called Night Window and it was inspired by memories of my childhood looking at little tiny windows in buildings in Havana or in Madrid in Spain. 
Adela studied at the Art Institute of Chicago in the late 1950s after coming to the States from Cuba. It was the height of abstract expressionism and her work is influenced as much by painting as by weaving. Her work can be found in the collections of the Smithsonian, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, and the Museum of Art and Design. I think all the time that I've been weaving, I've always wanted to work on the wall, but relieved from the wall, like go beyond the wall uh, in some form or another. If, if I go back to look at the work that I did, you know, in the early 70s, I was working still in sections or in panels. And in that way, I was able to pull away from the wall and involve the space in front of the wall. I remember the first piece I did, it was a black and white piece, like a big shield. And I felt like I was making quite a statement by making it dimensional, making a curve, kind of a concave, and inside of that there was a square that was convex. That was probably the beginning of when I felt that I was uh, doing something original. And it was my inspiration to do this kind of interpretation, which was a, a painted uh, bark cloth from the Mobuti tribes. Now the drawing comes from here, and then when I transfer it to a larger scale, I spread it out so that the, the lines don't have to converge. They don't have to line up, and it's fine with me if they don't. But by spreading it out, then I have, of course, room for this other color to be in, again, to add more dimension so that the hairs really float over a lot more. I've always been interested in looking at patterns of other cultures and other peoples. This is a ceramic bowl from Peru. The people who do this work are called the Shipibo Indians. Adela's next piece begins with small drawings, then translated larger. This paper will eventually be cut and used as a guide to weave the piece. I'm excited about it, because it's a new piece. It's all about learning, I think, for me. It's still an ongoing process for me. The more I see, the more I learn, and I'm just trying to keep working uh, in, a, in a personal way.